Welcome to the module on Well Control System. Today, we will learn about detection of kick, trip tank and its functions, blowout preventers commonly known as BOP, BOP stack, BOP ram, annular preventer, drilling spool, adjustable choke, and precautionary measures during kick. The well control system prevents the permeable uncontrolled flow of formation fluids from the well bore. When the bit penetrates a formation that has a fluid pressure more than the hydrostatic pressure exerted by the drilling fluid, formation fluids will begin displacing the drilling fluid from the well. The flow of formation fluids into the well in the presence of drilling fluid is called a kick. The well control system enables the driller to detect the kick, close the well at the surface, circulate the well under pressure to remove the formation fluids and increase the mud density, and Move the drill string up and down with the well closed and divert the flow away from rig personnel and equipment. Let's learn about detection of kick. Kick detection during drilling operations is usually achieved by use of a pit volume indicator or a flow indicator. Both devices can detect an increase in the flow of mud returning from the well over that which is being circulated by the pump. Mud flow indicators are used to help detect a kick more quickly. More commonly used devices are somewhat similar in operation to the pit level indicators. A panel on the rig floor displays the flow rate into and out of the well. If the rates are appreciably different, a gain or loss warning will be given. Kick detection during tripping operations is accomplished through use of a hole fill-up indicator. The purpose of the fill-up indicator is to measure accurately the mud volume required to fill the hole. If the volume required to fill the hole is less than the volume of pipe removed, a kick may be in progress. Moving on to trip tanks and their functions. Small trip tanks provide the best means of monitoring hole fill-up volume. Trip tanks usually hold 10 to 15 barrel and have one barrel gauge markers. Periodically, the trip tank is refilled using the mud pump. The required fill-up volume is determined by checking the fluid level in the trip tank. When a trip tank is not installed on the rig, Hole fill-up volume should be determined by counting pump strokes each time the hole is filled. The level in one of the active pits should not be used since the active pits are normally too large to provide sufficient accuracy. Let us now talk about blowout preventers or BOP. The flow of fluid from the well caused by a kick is stopped by use of well control devices called blowout preventers or BOP. A BOP will close the well and hold well pressure, consequently impeding new fluid from entering the well bore. Multiple blowout preventers with different purposes are used in a well. This arrangement is called a BOP stack. The reason for using a BOP stack is to enable the system to close the well and stop the flow of unwanted fluid into the well bore under all drilling conditions. The well control system must enable well closure while drilling, tripping in or out of the hole, running casing and even when there is no drill string inside the well. The BOP stack allows fluid circulation through the well annulus under pressure. These objectives usually are accomplished by using several ram preventers and one annular preventer. Coming to a BOP stack. A BOP stack is attached to the casing using a casing head. The casing head is welded or connected to the first string of casing cemented in the well. It must provide a pressure seal for subsequent casing strings placed in the well. Also, outlets are provided on the casing head to release any pressure that might accumulate between casing strings. The control panel for operating the BOP stack usually is placed on the derrick floor for easy access by the driller. The controls should be marked clearly and identifiably with the BOP stack arrangement used. Modern and safer rigs will have at least one other control panel located far from the rig floor. This panel will be used in case it is necessary, for safety reasons, to evacuate personnel from the rig floor. When the drill string is in the hole, the BOP stack can be used to stop only the flow from the annulus. Several additional valves can be used to prevent flow from inside the drill string. These valves include Kelly Cox that is the valves inside the Kelly and inside a BOP generally, an upper Kelly cock having left hand threads is placed above the Kelly and a lower Kelly cock having right hand threads is placed below the Kelly. The lower Kelly cock also is called a drill stem valve. Moving further let us learn about BOP rams. 
Ram preventers have two packing elements on opposite sides that close by moving towards each other. Pipe rams have semicircular openings that match the diameter of pipe sizes for which they are designed. Thus, the pipe ram must match the size of pipe currently in use. If more than one size of drill pipe is in the hole, additional ram preventers must be used in the BOP stack. Rams which are designed to close when no pipe is in the hole are called blind rams. Blind rams will flatten drill pipe if inadvertently closed with a drill string in the hole but will not stop the flow from the well. Shear rams are blind rams designed to shear the drill string when closed. This will cause the drill string to drop in the hole and will stop flow from the well. Shear rams are closed on pipe only when all pipe rams and annular preventers have failed or, in the case of offshore drilling, when an emergency dictates that the drilling vessel must abandon the location. In that case, the blind ram is intentionally activated, and an emergency disconnection is made. Ram preventers are available for working pressures of 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, and 15,000 psi. Let's have a look onto a pictorial representation of a double ram preventer. What are annular preventers? Annular preventers, sometimes called bag type preventers, stop flow from the well using a ring of synthetic rubber that contracts around the pipe, preventing fluid passage and sealing the annulus. The rubber packing conforms to the shape of the pipe in the hole. Most annular preventers also will close an open hole if necessary. These are available for working pressures of 2000, 5000, and 10,000 psi. Here you can see a picture of an annular preventer. April 20th, 2010. 11 workers died and 17 were seriously injured by an explosion on the Deepwater Horizon, an offshore drilling rig located approximately 50 miles off the coast of Louisiana. The rig burned for two days, eventually sinking and triggering the largest oil spill in U.S. history as oil and gas spewed up from the sea floor. The Deepwater Horizon had been drilling an oil well in 5,000 feet of water in an area of the Gulf of Mexico known as the Macondo Prospect. In 2010, the CSB launched an investigation to examine the technical, organizational, and regulatory factors that contributed to the accident. During the investigation, the CSB made new findings about why a key piece of safety equipment, the Deepwater Horizon's blowout preventer, failed to seal the well during the emergency. These new findings help explain why the accident was so devastating. And the CSB cautioned that other blowout preventers currently in use could fail in similar ways. Drilling an offshore well involves creating a pathway between the drilling rig and oil and gas reservoirs trapped beneath the sea floor. A deep hole, or well bore, is drilled through layers of subsea rock and sediment. These rocky layers can contain trap water, crude oil, and natural gas under pressure. An unplanned flow of these well fluids into the well bore, known in the industry as a kick, can be dangerous. Without careful management, a kick can lead to a blowout, the uncontrolled release of flammable oil and gas from the well. A blowout can be catastrophic since oil and gas reaching the drilling rig can quickly find an ignition source, leading to a fire or explosion, endangering the lives of the drilling crew. To prevent kicks, drillers pump a dense slurry called drilling mud into the well, creating a barrier between the undersea oil and gas and the piping that leads to the rig. If this mud barrier fails or is somehow removed, the safety of the drilling crew depends on a critical piece of equipment located on the sea floor called the blowout preventer, or BOP. The BOP is a complex electrically and hydraulically powered device that is essential for controlling the well and, in an emergency situation, preventing a disaster on the platform high above on the sea surface. The BOP is connected to the rig by a large diameter pipe called a riser if a kick occurs, the blowout preventer is designed to prevent flammable oil and gas from traveling up the riser to the drilling rig. This is done by sealing the area around the drill pipe, known as the annular space. To do this,
the crew can manually close pipe rams and donut-shaped rubber devices known as annular preventers. If those devices should fail to work, the last resort is a pair of sharp metal blades which form a blind shear ram designed to cut the drill pipe and seal the well. The blind shear ram can be activated manually or by automated emergency systems. At approximately 8.45 p.m. on April 20, 2010, a kick occurred in the Macondo well. Oil and gas entered the well bore undetected, eventually passing above the blowout preventer and traveling quickly up the riser toward the deep water horizon and the 126 people on board. Just after 9.40 p.m., drilling mud, forced upwards by the rising oil and gas, suddenly blew out onto the rig. Crew members responded by closing the upper annular preventer in the BOP. However, this did not seal the well as intended, and flammable oil and gas continued to flow into the riser toward the rig. Next, the crew closed a pipe ram. This successfully closed the annular space and sealed the well. But tragically, this proved to be only a temporary fix. Oil and gas that were already above the pipe ram continued to flow inexorably toward the deep water horizon. At approximately 9.49 p.m., the flammable hydrocarbons found an ignition source, and the first explosions shook the deep water horizon. As the oil and gas escaped the riser onto the rig, the pressure dropped in the annular space above the pipe ram. But at the same time, the pressure in the drill pipe climbed substantially. The drill pipe was closed at the top, but oil and gas continued to flow in from the reservoir below. After extensive analysis, the CSB concluded that this large difference in pressure likely caused the drill pipe to buckle, essentially bending the pipe off-center inside the blowout preventer. The buckling pushed sections of the drill pipe outside of the reach of the blind shear ram blades. This would eventually prove to be catastrophic. With the drill pipe buckled, the explosion and subsequent loss of electrical and hydraulic power from the rig likely activated an automated system on the blowout preventer known as the AMF dead man, which closes the blind shear ram and cuts the drill pipe. This emergency system is designed to activate when electric power, hydraulic pressure, and communications from the rig have been lost. The AMF Dead Man system was operated by two redundant control systems on the BOP, known as the Yellow Pod and the Blue Pod. The redundancy is supposed to increase the reliability of the system in an emergency situation. The Yellow and Blue Pods worked independently of each other and were comprised of identical enclosed computer systems and sets of solenoid valves. When activated, the solenoid valves controlled important BOP functions such as closing the blind shear ram. If electrical power from the rig was lost, as happened on April 20th, 2010, both the yellow and blue control pods contained backup 27-volt and 9-volt batteries to power emergency functions. The 9-volt batteries powered computers that would activate the solenoid valves, which were powered by the 27-volt batteries. However, evidence indicates the blue pod had been miswired at some time before the BOP was lowered onto the seafloor. This caused the pod's 27-volt battery to drain and made it impossible to operate the solenoid valve for the blind shear ram on the night of the accident. And within the redundant yellow pod, the solenoid for the blind shear ram had been miswired. The solenoid valves were controlled by two coils of electrical wire, these two coils were designed to work in concert, generating a magnetic field strong enough to operate the valve. But within the miswired solenoid valve, the two coils actually opposed each other, leaving the valve paralyzed. Only a third unplanned failure allowed the yellow pod to operate. On the night of the accident, one of the 9-volt batteries that powered the solenoid valve's computer had failed. As a result, the affected computer system could not initiate the command to energize the miswired coil. Had both coils of the miswired solenoid valve been energized, the two coils would have generated opposing forces on the valve. The solenoid valve would have remained closed and the blind shear ram would never have been closed. 
However, the failed battery rendered one coil inoperable and most likely allowed the other coil to open the solenoid valve by itself. This in turn initiated closure of the blind shear ram. This should have cut the drill pipe and sealed the well, greatly reducing the impact of the accident. But because the drill pipe was buckled and off-center inside the blowout preventer, it was trapped and only partially cut. With the failure of this last-ditch measure, there was nothing left to stop the massive oil spill and the destruction of the rig. During its investigation, the CSB identified a mechanism that likely caused the drill pipe to be buckled around the time of the explosion. This mechanism is called effective compression. Although effective compression had previously been noted as a hazard in other drilling operations, it had never been identified as a problem affecting drill pipe during well operations. Effective compression occurs because although pipe may appear to be perfectly straight, in fact it has minute bends and irregularities, invisible to the naked eye. Along these bends, the side of the pipe that is curved outward is slightly longer and has more surface area than the other side. When there is a large difference in pressure between the inside and outside of the pipe, as happened on April 20th, 2010, the longer side of the pipe experiences a larger bending force. Eventually, this force can become great enough to buckle even heavy pipe. This is an important finding, CSB investigators said, because the same conditions of differential pressure could occur at other drilling rigs, even if a crew successfully shuts in a well. The CSB warned this could make existing blowout preventer designs less effective in emergency situations. In the case of the Deepwater Horizon accident, the buckled drill pipe prevented the blind shear ram from sealing the well. Oil and gas from the well flowed out of the buckled drill pipe and into the Gulf of Mexico for 87 days. A reported 5 million barrels of oil eventually spilled causing one of the worst environmental disasters in United States history. Now let us have a quick look onto a diagrammatic illustration of BOP stack arrangement. Let us now understand drilling spool. Space between ram preventers used for stripping operations is provided by a drilling spool. Drilling spools also are used to permit attachment of high-pressure flow lines to a given point in the stack. These high-pressure flow lines make it possible to pump into the annulus or release fluid from the annulus with the BOP closed. A conduit used to pump into the annulus is called a kill line. Conduits used to release fluid from the annulus may include a choke line, a diverter line, or simply a flow line. All drilling spools must have a large enough bore to permit the next string of casing to be put in place without removing the BOP stack. Adjustable choke. A high-pressure circulating system is used for well control operations. The kick normally is circulated from the well through an adjustable choke. The adjustable choke is controlled from a remote panel on the rig floor. Sufficient pressure must be held against the well by the choke so that the bottom hole pressure in the well is maintained slightly above the formation pressure. Otherwise, formation fluids would continue to enter the well. Now let us understand the precautionary measures during a kick. Mechanical stresses on the emergency high-pressure flow system can be quite severe when handling a kick. The rapid release of large volumes of fluid through the surface piping frequently is accompanied by extreme vibrational stresses. Thus, care should be taken to use the strongest available pipe and to anchor all lines securely against reaction thrust. Also, some flexibility in the piping to and from the wellhead is required. The weight of all valves and fittings should be supported on structural members so that bending stresses are not created in the piping. Thank you for completing the module on well control system. You may now proceed with your assessment.